Dave here. How are you? Today is the 1st of October, fire season in Australia, all that kind of stuff. Daylight saving kicked in last night at around two or three o'clock. We've sprung forward because, of course, we are in the northern, sorry, southern hemisphere. I'm watching over here. It looks like the stream's coming through fine. I trust you've all had a good week. If I sound tired, it's because I lost one hour's sleep last night. Anyway, uh, are you sitting, waiting for the show to start? Give Dave a thumbs up while you're waiting. Thank you very much for that, Carl. Yep, yeah, look, do a thumbs up if you have a computer or, or whatever that you're watching the show on. Have a look down in the video description because there are links there for all sorts of things. There's a 10% discount on one of the items for uh, these new saw blades that I'm trying out. I will be using the new saw blade in the table saw today. It's not a rip blade, but I'm going to use it for ripping. And uh, I think it'll go fine. We'll find out. <laughs> and uh, So there's that discount code down there. There's also links to uh, other affiliations that I have, like TSO products. They've got links down there. They've got show sales on this weekend as well in the States. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's about it. AV is all good. Thank you very much. Morning, Ron. And you may also notice that I've just put on Facebook, I've created a Facebook page for Vicky's business, which is her vodka that she makes. And that's basically to let people know which markets she will be attending, uh, what time they're on and what day, all that kind of stuff. And her business is getting quite substantial now where we're going to split up, she, not divorce, we're going to go to different markets. I'll be taking one vehicle to a market. Vicky will be taking another vehicle to another market. Uh, what about the Amazon code? Exactly right, Carl. Thank you very much for that. That is also down there. Just use any Amazon link. I think it's down there. I will check. If it's not, I'll put one in after the show. So uh, again, if you can get that code, it, it might be for a toothbrush. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. Just as long as you use that code, even if you bookmark it and paste it up up the top of your computer use that code every time you go in then following using that that link I will follow you into the store and you might want to buy a toothbrush you might want to buy a hammer you might want to buy a new car all that kind of stuff if you do it's no extra cost to you <laughs> it's just if you want to be kind to me I will get a little bit of a spotter's fee back from Amazon I'm not promoting them. I'm just letting you know that if you want to help me keep this show alive, because I've retired, I do need to have an income. You know, people like to eat, wear clothes. I've got to buy blue shirts. I've got to feed the dogs, all that kind of stuff. That would be terrific. Let's move on past all of that. So what I have now, Dave, I only say the Amazon, saw the Amazon link for Australia. I will do one, Carl. Thank you very much. Okay, now... Fly screen doors. You'll see I have a fly screen door here behind me. Now, this one in particular is the kind of style... I made this about six, seven years ago. This is the style that I like. I like a nice big area at the top here. And I'll show you the reason why I like this style. Because I have um, four panel doors as the entry doors. So let's see if I can find some pictures. This is a picture of one of the buildings on the property. This is the studio, and it's got a, an entry door there that's a two-panel door down the bottom. It's got four individual glass lights at the top. Now, that's a really nice door, and the thing is, with, with uh, summer coming along early down here at the moment, it's getting quite warm, and the snakes are already out, and I can't just go leaving that door open. There is a dog door behind that bush. That's a uh, Daphne. So the dogs can come and go as they please. That's not a problem. We did put the door in, that dog door in um, on the show previously. But I do want to be able to and allow a breeze to go through the building and have a fly screen door on there. And it'll be spring loaded so it doesn't get left open. Uh, all right, so let's have a look at the next picture I've got here, which is this one. So I've put this particular screen door just up against it. It's the wrong size. I get all that. But it lets me have a feeling for what it would look like with that door or the similar door on it. Now, I can either make it with two gauze panels at the bottom like it's, it's got, 
or I can make it with solid panels like the door in behind it has. Now this is where I'd really need to have a little bit of feedback from you guys. So if you can advise me what you think would be better, whether to have, now remember it's stainless steel mesh, even though it's black, it is a stainless steel mesh because it's kind of got to be a fire resistant mesh. I can't have nylon on that area. Um, yeah, so give me some feedback on what you think might be an idea. I'll come back to this image here. Now, some of the things that we need to take into consideration, you'll notice that that door has a, um, I'm just watching the dog running around over there at the moment, making sure there's no snakes that it's chasing. All right, uh, <laughs> it's a fact of life. Uh, so I, I have an architrave on the outside of the, around the weatherboards to tidy them all up. Now, the thing is we need to work out whether I'm going to have the door open left hand or right hand. Now, you might say, well, what's it matter? A left hand door has the hinges on the left hand side. So you would open a left hand door with your left hand. You would cross over to the right hand side of the door to open it up that way. So when it's fully open, you're not crossing over like that to open a door. That would be using a right hand on a left hand door, which, you know, you don't do it. It's instinctively, you just don't do it. You will open a left hand door with your left hand. If it's a right hand door, the hinges are on the right hand side, you'll go like that and open such. It doesn't matter if it's opening out or if it's opening in, it's still a right hand door, no matter if the hinges, so no matter if it's opening in or out, right hand, Right hand for the hinges, left hand is left hand for the hinges. I hope, if nothing else for the show today, that's one thing that you've learned. If you go through your home, you can be really wise now and say to people, this is a left hand door. And they'll say, well, thanks for that. <laughs> I get it all the time, don't worry. Things that are important to some people have no bearing of in life to others. Be aware, <laughs> be prepared for that with woodwork. All right, let me have a quick read down the side here. Uh, John, morning, and fellow woodworkers have to visit Men's Shed this morning. We'll watch later. Peter, full screen in metal screen material. Peter, I think that's the way I'm looking at. As I've got a dog door now that works, I won't have dogs going clawing at that corner. And if they do, they'll hit the door, the timber part. They won't actually hit the screen. So I'm thinking that might be the best. Let me read on a little bit more. Steve, you need to weed your path. That's happening this week, and I'm gonna explain what's gonna happen as well. If you screen the bottom panels, would the dogs be likely to damage them? Uh, probably not. That was a consideration, but if I use a cedar panel, which is a nice soft timber, which is uh, an H2 timber for outside, well then, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what's gonna happen. They, they might just absolutely destroy the panel. So hopefully they can just use the dog door and not worry about the pedestrian door for people. Brian, morning. Graham, morning, Dave. All right, now I did mention about weeding. Now that out there, there are 12,000 pavers that I laid. <laughs> it took me a long time. I had a friend help me with it as well. Uh, there's 30 ton of road base and blue metal dust and cement stabilization under that whole area. It's a massive area. And there are weeds coming up here and there. They're not really getting into the, into the ground. They just get to the dirt that might have fallen underneath the paver and just in the little cavities. So what I do is I get the pressure cleaner out with a big head on it, massive head, and go around and clean the whole thing off. And then I get my whipper snipper and I just go nuts with that. I'll, sp I'll spend probably four hours over there just with the whipper snipper and a heap of line. And it's a battery one, so don't worry, I'm not running petrol engines or anything like that to do that. I will run a petrol engine for the pressure cleaner, but that's another story. All right, um, Ron, if you have screen on the bottom, would you have a problem with dust blowing in? Uh, that's an interesting point. That is an interesting point. There's no real dust there because we've got so much lawn and hard surfaces out there there's very little dirt that's exposed. Even the dirt that I've got in the gardens, I've got mulch over the top. So it's, it would have to be dust blowing in from the desert, like in the mummy. <laughs> I, 
I don't think that's going to happen. Um, Carl, what's a whippersnipper? Uh, well, I guess you could call it a weed eater or a line trimmer, all that kind of stuff. In Australia, we call it a whippersnipper. So it's a, it's a shank with a, a, a battery pack on one end and a, a, a little electric motor on the other hand with a head and with line out of it and it spins. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. A lot of people have them with a petrol motor and that's got a flexible shaft down the middle of the, uh, the section and just the, the head with the trimmer on the end. But the electric ones have got the digital motor or electric motor right down on the end, which I didn't know until I destroyed one. Anyway, there we go. Chris, how are you? Uh, the best mower for pathways is blue. Most call it Roundup. Interesting question, interesting thing there, Peter, but my dogs think Roundup smells pretty good and I don't want to have them die before the wedding. So this is what's happening next Sunday. I'm taking my time to get into the show. I know it. It's already 10 past and we're just having a chat. Next week, next Sunday, my grandson is getting married and they're having the reception here. So that's why I really haven't been putting out much content in the last couple of weeks. I have been flat out doing maintenance. Hence, this door, we're going to repair this door on the show today and I'm going to explain a couple of other things about it. Okay, all right. Now, this is not a standard door hinge. This is what's called an extended butt. Now, the reason they call it that is because the distance from the point where you put it onto the door, from there out to the knuckle, out to the pin, is longer than normal. Let me see, you. I think I've got another hinge here. This is a standard hinge, or part one length of a standard hinge. And I'm gonna put it on top of there. So you can see how much further out the pin is on, on this one. Why have I got that? I'm using these on the screen doors. Remember I did talk about it right at the beginning that there is an architrave around the door. When a door opens, if the knuckle is in close to the door and to the door jam, the door can only swing around just past 90 degrees, maybe 120 degrees before what's going to happen is called binding. The door, the face of the door will actually start to hit the architrave. I can't let the door open any further. Extended butt hinges take you out past. Say this is the door on the door jam. My, this, this elbow is the point of connection. Ordinary door around, all right, this way to 120. Odd. Extended butts means bring this out further. And now you can see if it's out further, it can go all the way around 180 degrees and the door can go from being um, open or closed, I should say, to all the way around. So the door opens up parallel with the wall. So it goes out past, it, it allows the pivot to go out past. If you don't have things like this, what happens is the, as the door opens, there's a massive amount of leverage as a, on a pivot point and the pivot point will be the um it will be the not the fulcrum it'll be the pivot point i'm pretty sure will be the edge of the architrave and that will and the weight of the door and the inertia the door is already built up as it's traveling around will eventually pull all the screws out or or tear the door open so that's an that's just one of the little considerations that you've got to have with doors or with um with fly screen doors with architraves now another consideration we need for the door is Remember, I was talking about left hand and right hand. Do you want to open a fly screen door on the same hand as the pedestrian main entry door is? In other words, do you want to go up to a fly screen door and open it with your left hand? So like this, and then just reach in with your right hand and do this behind you as you're going into the door. So that would be having a left hand door for the screen and a right hand door for your entry door. Obviously, both doors can't open out. They have to both, one, one would open in, one would open out. Some people have fly screen doors on the inside of a building. Some people have fly screen doors on the outside of a building. Um, let me give you an example of a fly screen door on the inside of a building. Let's say in the situation like this one, 
This fly screen door lives on the inside of the building, not on the outside. The reason being the, there's French doors and they're exposed to the weather. If you have French doors on the inside of the building or any entry door basically on the inside of a building that opens inwards and doesn't have a lot of shelter from rain and things, what happens is the water will hit, it'll come down, and if you haven't got the bottom sealed really well, it will come into the building. So if you've got a sill, a, a door sill, and the rain comes down, hits the door sill, runs in and drops down and comes, starts coming across the floor. Now, if that's a concrete floor and tiled, not such a big issue. But on this one, this is a two-story building and upstairs timber floor. You don't want the water coming in and then starting to run down onto the ceiling up from the, of the floor below. So like, that's what happened. I <laughs> the door in opening in because I thought, oh yeah, all fly screen doors got to go on the outside. No, don't do it. Double doors, second story with minimal shelter always make them open out because what happens is when you close them, rain runs down the, the face of it. Uh, the sill is on the inside with a little rebate or a rabbit, as you guys in the States would call, and the rain runs outside. Not a problem. Onto the flashing and away it goes. So hence, this one's on the inside. That's, so that's another consideration. The other consideration is if you have both doors opening left-hand hinge, like left-hand doors, so open this way, and then the, the other door opens in that way as well. You might have both handles of the door. So you might have the handle for the pedestrian door and the handle for the fly screen door. I might want to bump into each other. Hence, the fly screen door won't be able to close because it'll have this interference. If you want to keep things at the same height, there is a way around it. You have the door on the, swung on the other uh, hand and so handle over there handle over here easy or you can actually be a little bit um, normal can I say normal not me you can be normal and not worry if the handles are at different heights up and down the door so I might have the entry door might have a handle here because it's normal to put a handle where a rail is meeting the style. That's a normal spot to put a door handle because it's not confusing, it's not up here. So that's on an entry door and that's where it is on mine. I normally like to have a handle for a screen door down here as well, but I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a door. Actually, I'm going to build two. I'm going to build one for here and one for over there. So I will build a door very similar to this one and I will have its handles here, up, up here and up here, so that they're out of the way and don't collide. Door lever hinge fulcrum. Yes, pivot point would be where it hits the architrave. So you've got hinge is, is, uh, is the fulcrum, is it? Could be, yeah. Hinge is the fulcrum. Pivot point is the, uh, is the architrave that it might hit. And then the door itself is the lever, the whole whole length of it. Yeah, I think I think we've got it there, Carl. Uh, full screen on top and bottom hinge opposite to inner door. Well, here's some other considerations I've got. There is a light. See, there's so many little things you've really got to think about. There is a light on the wall to the right hand side as I'm approaching the building from the outside to the right hand side of the door, maybe around this far away from the edge of the door is a light in between a window and the door. And it's an automatic light turns on, you know, looks cute, all that kind of stuff. And so if I had the screen door opening right hand hinge, it would be going heading towards the light and blocking parts of it. With the door opening left hand, it's moving away from the light. And so I've still got full light coming in to be able to put a key in the lock to undo the entrance door to get in. See, there's so many little things that come into play. Weather, um, the, in, the in total environment around where the door is. And there's also that Daphne bush on the left-hand side. So I won't be able to open it up 
full width. It'll come to around about 110 degrees, but that Daphne bush will act as a soft buffer. So if the wind gets a hold of it, there's another element I hadn't even thought about. It. Like, pff, where do I get these ideas? <laughs> you don't care, do you? So if the wind gets a hold of this fly screen door and uh, throws it open, it's not going to reef it back real quick to tear it off its hinges. It will hit the Daphne bush. I think I've got it sorted. I think I'll swing it. No. Nope. Change my mind again, again. I think I'll swing it right hand hinge. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open it towards the light. I don't care if I can't see. I have other little solar lights out there that will work, that'll help me out. Uh, I will put a automatic door closer on it. You know, that's like a little cylinder, it looks like a push bike pump, but it's a cylinder with a little catch so I can hold it open if I want. or open it up so it's never going to kind of blow open. So there's other things, there's mechanical assistance. Have we absolutely covered every base that we can with it? Here's the next thing, what kind of materials can we make it out of? Being an external door, it's a good idea to use H2 timber, which is normally uh, cedar. Western red cedar at the moment is very expensive in Australia. Eastern red cedar, apparently, I'm told, is about half the price. So I can either make it out of cedar and put a clear finish on it, or I can do it like this one. This is pine. This is H2 pine. And it's had a, I've just painted it. Undercoat, primer seal, or all that kind of stuff. And then an exterior white gloss paint. And I think that's what I will do over there. So I'm going to check, pardon me, I'm going to check out the prices. See which is, you know, a, a good price. That's another consideration, dollars. And I will domino it together with the little 500. So I'll domino there, domino there, domino all there. And uh, I'll make it slightly oversized. So then I can cut it, I'll make the horns longer. See at the top here, the, thing, the pieces of timber, these are called styles. The height, I'll make them go past about 10 millimeters longer than I want. And then I can dress them all off with the track saw and just it, it makes it so much easier. It really does. All right. I think, I think I've got just about everything covered as far as the doors are concerned. Now, what I want to do is I want to show a viewer's project. Well, actually, the first thing we do is I'll show you a piece of wood that a viewer has sent in to me, or a picture that he sent in. So this is from uh, Michael Jamison. It's a piece of camphor, it's 600 by 400 by 22 millimeters. And this is one of the reasons why I love this wood. Isn't that absolutely glorious? Tell me what you think. What would Michael make out of that? 600 by 400, which is two feet by 16 inches by 22 millimeters, which is seven eighths of an inch thick dressed. What would you make out of that? It's absolutely beautiful. What do you reckon? So nice. All right, whilst you guys are having a think about it and are busy typing, we'll also have a look at how the viewers project, Peter Dane, is going. And this is, uh, Remember, he's building the same toolbox as I'm building. Well, after I've shown you this picture, I will bring mine around and I'll show you where we're up to with that. So Peter is doing some inlay. This is his son's initials, JD. So he's bought some MDF letters from Spotlight. And Spotlight, for those people that aren't in Australia, Spotlight is basically a haberdashery, I guess you could call it, on steroids. <clears throat> it's like a big box store for women, sorry, I can't say that, uh, for people who are into using soft materials and soft furnishings and craft. So I apologize for my thing that I just said. Soon I have to have the Starlink up. This is Peter and be back on the net. I'm selling a lot of the tools and will contact you in relation to what you would feel the best platform for selling these. Okay, a small desktop. Is that what you think, Anthony? Well, it's possible. 
All right, let's have a look at the next picture that Peter's got here. Um, so you can see JD on the left being the, um, the MDF templates that he's made or he's bought. And then the J and the D are the next kind of thing and a piece of pine that he's shown and the recess. And then here we go. That's the image. And when he's put a finish on it, it's going to look a whole lot better. It, it does pop, not as much as I wanted it to, but it will. Electric guitar body. That's a brilliant idea, Derek. What a great idea. That would look really, really nice. If camphor will hold. I think it does. Um, I have something else that I'm going to do. In, so remember, next week we may not have a show. I might do a, uh, I might do a show that's as a premiere. So I could do it and then release it at 11 o'clock while I'm actually watching my grandson get married. <laughs> Be, you guys can watch the show and pretend that I'm here and having fun. Um, okay, I'd make gift boxes, one for my wife and one for my daughter. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, let me see where am I up to. Oh, there are so many things happening at the moment. I've got to try and keep my mind focused on where we're at. Uh, one of the other things that I showed you during the week, uh, for some people may have seen it, some people may not have, is um, this little guy. Now, if you're scared of spiders, look away. <clears throat> oh, Derek, you've done one in camp, but that's great. So this little guy was in my workshop on top of the toolbox. And you see these little eyes on the top. I think he's got eight, but there's four eyes up the top there just looking out. He's got his little kind of mandible grabber things there. And so I, uh, this is the little video I did of him while, while he was in the workshop. You may not have seen it, but if you haven't, if you have, that's fine, but here you go again. Dave here, how are you? I've got a visitor in my workshop and let's see if we can get a close up of him. Here he is. This is a little huntsman and he's hanging out on the project that we're building at the moment. <laughs> he's alive. You watch this. There he goes. <laughs> oh, he's beautiful. Over the edge. You want to come over and hang up, hop on my hand? Hey, would you like that? I'm not going to. <laughs> but he's out, harmless. They would hurt if they bite you, but he's not, not poisonous. So, they're cute. They're, huntsmen are lovely spiders. They chase their prey down. They're really quick. Their prey are flies and little kind of invertebrates. So they're great to have. They don't make webs, although they can spin a web. They, they will have a, a web uh, to help them lower down. They normally live under bark on trees and things like, and in crevices, because they don't like to get eaten by birds and kookaburras and all that kind of stuff. So that's him. Now we have another spider that you do not muck around with. This is the Blue Mountains funnel web. And yes, oh sorry, last week, my next door neighbor was digging in his yard and I've had them as well. I've been digging away in the garden and next thing you know, I have a dirty big funnel web sitting right in front of me and they will kill you. <laughs> so you get bitten by one of them and panic and don't get anti-venom. Say goodnight. That's all there is to it. Anyway, here's a picture. This is uh, Jeff's uh, little encounter. And there, he, there she is. You don't mess with those guys. But if you live in Australia, you uh, you realize which things are out to kill you and which things are your friends. Now, huntsman spiders are your friend. Don't hurt them. Don't kill them. I know so many people that just throw all spiders into one basket and say it's a spider. I don't care. Dead. I think that's horrible. With the funnel webs, some people, I've done it. You catch them. So it's just a matter of a glass, put it over the top of them, slide a piece of wood underneath, put them in a work container, and you take them to uh, the local council, I think, or a chemist, and they end up milking them. So they get the venom to create anti-venom. So don't do it unless you really know what you're doing. We haven't done much woodwork today, have we? All this show and tell. I'm going to have a quick look down here and make sure I've got everything squared away. One last thing, one last video I want to show you. It's, I did a very, very short seven second video of my router starting up in the router table. 
So you may be interested to watch this. It's only very, very short. Ah, it's so short, it's not even there. I'll save it. I'll, I'll get it back and I'll save it for another show. I just thought, uh, I'll just stay in the States. That thing is bloody huge. Steve, I would put trim around it and put it under glass to show the beauty of it and make a small tabletop. That's an interesting thought, Steve. It is a really beautiful piece of wood. I, I love it. We're talking about the camp laurel again. Uh, John, you'll stay in the States. Peter, Dave, you've been talking to Wendy. Carl, uh, you're going to stay over there as well. <laughs> Carl, as I say, it's just one of those things. You live within your environment, and if you're accustomed to it and you're awake up to the dangers and to the pleasures, like I've got snakes will come through here as well. I've had snakes inside the workshop. Uh, the spiders, not a problem. We had ducks come in here, you know. It, I, I live with it. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move up. I'll show you the, the box. We'll show you the box. Move a couple of things out of the way here. Extended butts. I don't know. Is this kind of stuff interesting to you? It's, I've, it's not a full on woodworking live show. Mostly it is. But every now and then I'll do, a, do one like this. It's just I'm absolutely stuffed from daylight saving. And we worked yesterday really hard with the markets. And I'm painting and redoing architrave skirting boards, all that kind of stuff in this other building. And uh, it cooks you. It really does cook you. All right, here we go. I'm really, really happy with how this, this is going. Move this along. I'll pull this screen back a bit further. I think about there. There we go and tilt down a little. There. So this is my toolbox, and you've seen it all. You've all seen it like this. But one of the things is now I've got the drawer in here. And so when I, it's not as drummy anymore because the drawer's in behind there. You wanna have a look? Here we go. So there it is. There's the silky oak drawer with the camphor on the end. I love camp laurel. And the dovetails, of course, courtesy of Coles Jig. And the bottom is recycled. Remember, see, there's the little nail points. This was the back of one of the drawers. And inside, got the silky down here as a, as a guide for a, uh, another drawer section I'm gonna put in there. In here, I've got purple heart runners. And I've put a little bit of candle wax on it. Now, if you're going to use candle wax as a lubricant for the runners, and I also had uh, felt in here, but I got rid of the felt because it just looked crappy. It really didn't suit. So I, I cleaned it all off with um, acetone because the adhesive part really is sticky. And you, I could have used eucalyptus oil, but I had some acetone here and took it off pretty quick. Um, a little bit of candle wax. And the other thing you need to do is to get a cloth and burnish the candle wax into the wood and you know what it just makes it smooth if you don't do that it grabs the candle wax actually acts like grease that's dried out it just sets so burnish it up and away it goes southerly buster has just arrived oh anyway so i can have it like that which is that direction and the grain is beautiful or i can turn it around and the, this is the back of it is another drawer front of silky oak. So it can go either way, like so. And that looks cool. Or pull her out, spin her around, and the other way. In it goes. And then I've got to put some feet on it. It's doing that because it's a long drawer, so it can sit up there when it's open and the magnetic catches. Anyway, that's enough of that one. I just thought you might want to see where that was up to. That project's basically done. As I say, I'm going to put a sliding drawer in this top as well. But I'll do that as, again. That's because I'm working from the side. And shut. All right, I'm going to pop that over there. 
Uh, actually, I'll take it down here, I think. I've changed my mind a lot, don't I? And seeing I've got some of the things off here, let me have a quick read. Double chain the, the dog. I, I, Florida is where the critters from Australia come to go hunting, like a foreign exchange program. Okay. Um, I'm trying to read through here. It looks great. Um, Derek, please translate. Yeah. Um, Southerly Buster just arrived at Basin's Bay. Okay, Southerly Buster means the wind is coming in from the south. So we have very strong winds coming from the south. And they call it a buster because it breaks things. <laughs> it bursts out onto the, onto the scene. All right, moving, moving things in. Don't get too close. And the other one I'll move in as well. And... Derek, we had last night, blew strong all night. Um, okay, thanks, Nath. All right, I'm going to go to the other camera and we'll do some ripping. And I should talk about that as well. Now, you're not, you're not going to have any chat happening at, that time, at this time. What I want to do is I want to rip that door uh, I've got to take a hinge off at first. So I'll get this, bring it down here so you can watch. I've taken all of the screws out except for one. Oh, sorry, three. I told a lie. Again. One, two, and the third one. Three. If you're ever ripping a door down, make sure you take all the bits of metal off it. Of course, it's no fun. <laughs> if, if you cut something and halfway through, you're running into something. Now, this side of the door, there is, there's nothing on it. There's no molding or anything like that. I wanted to cut the rebate off. What's happened here, the door has shrunk by about six millimeters over the pair of them. So I'm not getting a proper lap on this lap joint. So I don't want to just cut that off and create a new lap joint. I'm going to cut maybe an inch back in or 25 millimeters back in, and I'm going to put a fillet in there instead. I thought that might work better. So this is the piece of wood that I'm going to use for the fillet. Uh, we will rip that down and put it through the jointer. And I'm going to spin this around and put it on top of here. I could have used my track saw and it probably would have been the best saw to use for this part of the project. But I want to use this because I have the new Mesa blade in here. Now, I did say at the beginning of the show, I have created a new affiliation with this as an Australian startup company. The blades are German design and built with German machinery. These things, I think, so far have been brilliant. They're high end. They're a fantastic price in comparison. I've got one for the Capex and it's better than half price of the original blade. So I, I want to use it here in this situation. I'm going to rip with it. It's not a rip blade. It's a, um, it's a, industrial fine finish but i'm been so impressed with ripping with it that i'm just going to leave it on the saw for a little bit at the moment i'll lower that down and everything back here is clear which is important i'll throw on some protection again always make sure that your path for the exit of all of this stuff, entrance and exit for the going through a saw, it's clear. Because there's nothing worse while you've got a saw spinning and all of a sudden you realize, oh, oh, that thing's in the way, I'm gonna hit it and try and stop. Because two things, it's dangerous. The other thing is you're gonna get a mark on the cut where you paused the saw and it became stationary. All right, here we go.
What are we catching on? Nothing. I was just being a little bit cautious. I'm reaching around behind the guard. It's one of the good things about having the, the splitter and the guard is that I know exactly where I'm at. That is such a nice cut. That's be beautiful. Have a look at that. bottom and top, super clean, very impressed with these blades, take that off and take the, the, the door out, that is so, I'm not going to plane that, I'm going to, that's, that's a bloody good glue cut. And I can tell exactly now it's pine. And again, I said this one was an inside screen door, so it doesn't stress me. I'll pop that down and over there. Oh, one of the other things I've got to be aware of is when I put it back together, that I put this on the right way. So that was there. I'm going to have to, before I glue it, I've got to make sure I've got the right hands. Okay, so this one is... Yeah, I gotta check because <laughs> that would be terrible. I have two of the uh, the rebates on the same page, and that would just they'd be butting into each other. All right, so I've got that. Move that out of the way, and I've got a piece of this stuff, which is also pine, and this is that green stuff is called candleth treated. So it's it's an it's a anti termite, all that kind of stuff, and it will do. It's already got a bit of white paint on one side. It's about one and a half millimeters thicker than that door. I'm going to rip it down to six millimeters, maybe seven millimeters. Again, I'll use that same. I'm going to raise the blade up a little bit so I can get the um, fence in underneath. I don't want to come up too much. And that is. Eight millimeters. I'll leave it there. Now, what have I got down here? I'll use a. Uh... Hey, now see how I am. I use one of these as well. Now, because I'm not, the magnets aren't over the area here. Have I got that other one? I've got another um, feather board that was sent over to me from the states. That's another mag switch board that it locks into the uh, the slot the dado slot on the top of the um, table saw. And that's basically for if you're, um, if you end up with a point where the magnets are trying to lock onto that area where the slot is, they'll do it, but they're not gonna be any, any good. Uh, now bring this back down to here. And again, it's always a good idea. Don't put it past the beginning of the blade. Always keep it Keep it back there and don't put too much pressure on it because if, you, if you've got a lot of pressure on this direction, it acts as a brake and it doesn't want to go through as well. So I just, I put a little bit of pressure on, not a lot, and lock the magnets. And I'm going to pull it back just a little. And that's it. I'll drop this down even though it's not going to do much. It still does collect dust. All right, so this, I think I'm going to dock it to, to length after. But I'll run it through this. Again, it's not touching the blade. I've got it back from the blade. This is holding well. I'm going to lock the blade's height, release this, and start.
up. I'm coming up to a knot. So I've got to be very careful at this part now. I'll put my hand around the back of it again so that where the knot comes through, if it releases, it's not going to pick it up and throw it at me. I'm going to wait until that knot has passed. You can see it under my arm. I'm going to wait until it goes past the back of the blade so it'll be on the actual split or the riding knife. And now it's clear. See that there? If I cut through that, that could just throw it straight back at me. But like that, it's safe now. Little things to keep your eye out for if you're doing stuff like this. But what a nice blade. Isn't it beautiful? I'm coming around the back again like this. I'm going to come around behind and pull the blade, pull the wood through the rest of the way. I'm holding the off cut and also the piece that I'm wanting. Again, that's just, just to make sure that I don't bring my fingers in too close to the blade. <laughs> it doesn't care if it bites you or not. It's a nice blade and does a great job. But it makes it, it would make mince meat of my fingers. And look at, look at that. How nice is that cut? Again, top and bottom. It's really handy having the white paint on there because then you can see what's happening. All right, now the plan is. I've taken a little bit more than what I said I was going to because I removed 3.2 millimeters with the width of the saw cut when I cut that piece off. So I've, I've set this at eight. So 3.2, we're gonna be about five millimeters. The difference was, was uh, six and that was a tight cut, a tight fit I should say on the, on the lap joint. So now I've got five, which is gonna give me one millimeter down the middle. And I'm hoping that's gonna be right. If it's two millimeters, that's fine. I've got, I've got a five and a half millimeter overlap. And if it's a three millimeter, that's gonna be just nice. It's gonna be, I think it's gonna be beautiful. Let me have a look here. So that's gonna go into there like so. I'm gonna turn it the other way up because I might be able to keep that paint how it is. And then this one is gonna go on here like so and glue it together. Now I have to glue it together, it's 10-2. I need to do a quick check. <sighs> Move all that over there after I've just sent everything flying. Move this one back. Push this one back again. And this one. All right. All right. Let me have a look here. Phineas Tunnel Web Spiders, Darwin has cross comes, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry, I didn't, mean so, I didn't mean to say blah, blah, blah. I'm just reading through quickly. Uh, strong enough to blow the dog off the chain. Okay, uh, not everything in Australia is trying to kill you, but a lot of it can if you mess with it. Uh, simple answer, don't mess with it, can't kill it. Exactly right, exactly right. Uh, the idle hands are well in Florida everything does want to kill and eat you including the people <laughs> and weather oh well um anything Sydney has funnel web spiders Darwin has cross calms oh, Cairns has jellyfish Perth has sharks Adelaide has serial kill Hi. um currently watching two things Dave on the screen and a small bushfire 20k away on out the window 25 inches engine three helicopters uh, catching on hesitation, better safe than sorry. Darwin has crocs. New Zealand, redback spiders. Numerous times, I wish I did, making it before I cutting. Yes, just cut up an apple, pet, lovely uh, ice cream. Okay, so now we're getting into the chat those blades are excellent value for money 
I reckon so. Because they got in touch with me and, and said, well, we're an Australian startup company based in Adelaide. This is the credentials. We, you know, we use all this German machinery to make the stuff and it's a German design. And it's got anti-kickback design as well, which is nice. And I looked at it and I thought, you know what? Why not? I will try them for a while. And I have, have, have been trying them. You can see that. I put a couple of posts up on Facebook and Instagram. And I, I can't fault them. And for their price, very, 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 very nice. Anyway, as I say, links in the video description down the bottom. There is an affiliation and also it's a 10% discount off their great price. I think the Festool blade that I've got in there, a 60 tooth Festool blade for me from Festool is $365 around that. Messrs, identical blade. The only thing different is instead of a 2.6 millimeter wide kerf, it's got a 2.5 millimeter 2.5 millimeter wide kerf. So we're looking at 0.1 of a millimeter, which is 100 microns. I'm not concerned. So that is 135. They're doing them at 125. And also, if you use my code, it'll bring it in around about $115. And it's free delivery. <laughs> Why would you? Why would you? And it's got the negative rate, five degrees negative rate, everything identical. 30 millimeter bore for, to go into the saw. That one there can be run with saw stop as well. So they've got 254 and they've got two, 260, I think, or 250. Whatever size you need for the saw stop, they've got it. They've got a 60 and a, 40, and a laminate cutting blade as well, which is something that I'm going to ask them about. I think you might need to send me that laminate blade up as well. Anyway, I think their product is really good. And if it's an Australian business, I'm over the moon to be able to help support them. And also to, to get some nice goodies in the post and, uh, and play with them here in the workshop and let you guys know. If it's a rubbish goodie, I will tell you that it's rubbish. If it's a good goodie, I will tell you it's a good goodie. You can trust. Not a problem. I have to go. Uh, great day next week. I will, Steve. Thank you very much. 254 millimeters. Most blades are only, those blades are only in Australia. Uh, I, they develop, they deliver around the world, Carl. Not a problem at all. I don't know what the delivery fee for going over to the States is. It might be free. I don't know, but it's free delivery in Australia. You know, like with TSO products, it's free delivery for a lot of their things within the, the contiguous states of Australia. So it's the, the 50, I think it is, contiguous states. So Alaska and Hawaii are out of that. Um, contiguous meaning all borders of all the states are interconnected basically there's a, there's a, there's contact where with Alaska obviously you've got Canada in the way and with Hawaii you've got the Pacific Ocean in the way uh, yeah so that's that's a bad thing for us in Australia that TSO are like that uh, but it, it does cost a lot of money I've tried to send stuff overseas so I know exactly the cost of sell, sending stuff overseas hence I don't send my benches anywhere apart from Australia uh, and these guys are looking after us and we need looking after every now and then because it's fair. All right. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to wind the show up now. I'm going to glue this door up this afternoon. I don't want to have you hanging around watching. So what we'll do is I will start the patrons meeting. If you're in the continental, uh, us. Okay. I'm going to have the patrons meeting. If you're interested in joining that, you've got to be a patron. You know, get in for a buck a month if you want. And uh, we'll have a bit of a chat. <clears throat> a bit of a chat. And I think that's about it. I'm sorry I didn't do anything woodwork on the show apart from two rips on the table saw. But you have seen the, the finalization of that toolbox. And you've seen Peter's toolbox coming along. And it looks beautiful. Uh, and I'm sure... Come Christmas time, his son is going to be over the moon about it. I will show you pictures as I get as I get the um, that sliding box done at the top, and it will be a little individual toolbox on its own that you can take out. So I hope, fingers crossed. Anyway, uh, I think that is it. I'll have a look down here. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other, and I shall not see you next week. I'll see you the week after. Thanks again. Bye.